Hey, this is Ken at Capital Advantage Tutoring. It's my job to get you past the Series 65 and the Series 66 exam. Go on my list, but I just can't speak. It's crazy. So today we're going to talk. So today we're going to pretty much talk about the time value of money. Now, everything we're going to do all relates back to the fact that money now is worth more than money later. That's just the deal. Okay. It is always the case. And anyone who has a CFA already, shut up, because I know that I'm doing very basic level, and there's going to be a little tweaky sit that's wrong or whatever it is, and it's not a perfect example. But this will be what you need to know to get past the 65 and the 66 exam. So let's make sure we got this, okay? Future value. You need to know certain things. You need to know future value. You need to know present value, IRR, DCF, NPV, all that. We're going to get to it. Well, let's start with future value. Future value, and I'll do an example Future value is what an investment now will be worth in the future, given a certain return. Okay, again, you know that the CFAs and people who are really smart are going to be shitting on me for this, but this is, I'm explaining it the way you need to know it for the test. So these are the terms we're going to be going over, okay? Discounted cash flow, internal rate of return, future value, present value, and NPV. Those are the terms we're going to cover today, okay? Now, present value is basically what we're going to say is to get present value, we need the future value. So let's talk about future value first. Future value is what an investment now, like say we invest a hundred bucks now at a rate of say 10%, it will say 10% and for five years, that's a year. That's all I'm going to do. I, again, you will never have to do the formulas, but let's understand. So if you invest a hundred dollars now at 10% for five years, that's going to be worth 150 bucks. That's our future value. So an investment now, future value, is what present value or an investment now will be worth given a certain return and, and how many years. So what we're trying to figure out is this is what they call the internal rate of return. The rate of return where present value becomes future value. We call that a zero NPV, but we'll get to that, okay? So the internal, we're trying to find out the internal rate of return. So we're trying to find out what this can become this. So the internal rate of return is the rate of return where present value becomes future value. And you have a zero NPV, which we'll get to. Okay, so now, now what happens if I have the 150 and I go, okay, what do I have to invest now to get to the 150 in five years? That's going to be, we're going to use DCF, discounted cash flow. We're taking all the future cash flows, whether it's a lump sum payment or payments over time, and discounting them back to today. Now, remember, this is the point. The time value of money, again, is that money now is worth more than money later, or money in the future is not worth the same as money now. So we're trying to find out what $150 in five years is worth in today's money. The idea is that whatever you can buy for $100 now, it would cost you $150 to buy that in, 50, in five, 50 years, five years. Or whatever you can buy for $150 in five years, it would only cost you $100 now. That's what we're trying to figure out. Basically, the rate of return, the internal rate of return, and what the future value is by taking the present value, adding the interest rates in the number of years, and bringing up the future value. And if we want the present value, we take the future value, the rate of return, and the number of years, and we discount it back to present value. So again, you need to get present value, you need future value. To get future value, you need present value. So I tell everyone, for future value, you need these three things. And for present value, you need these three things. So, and if you do this present value, if this present value formulas and all that, and you come out with a future value of a 150 and you bring it back based on discounted cash flow to 100, and that's your present value, that's where the price should be. That's what the market price is. But let's say it's actually at 85. So that means our present value is 100, but we could actually buy it in the market at 85. That's kind of a good thing because if, remember, the expected value of it is 100. We can buy it for 85. We're doing well. So that means we have what they call a positive NPV, and it's totally worth investing in because we're going to earn more than our rate of return. The rate of return that we just figured out between 150 and 100 is the internal rate of return, and we're earning more than that, okay? So because we're buying it for 85, not 100. So we're earning more, so that's a good thing. So that's a positive NPV. Now... Let's say you do the same thing. Hold on, let me bring those terms back. Same thing, but you look and say, oh, wow, it's going to cost me 105 to buy it. That means I'm paying more than what's worth, and then you have to make a decision, but that's going to have a negative NPV because you're pairing the market price to the present value, the present value of 100, 
you're paying more than present value. So that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. Okay. So that means you're going to, you're going to make less than expected to find some other investment. Because the idea is that if you invest 100 now and you get 150, you're fine. If you can invest 105 and get 150, eh, it's close, but you're doing worse than you should. You're actually losing money because they're saying that $150 in five years can buy $100 worth of stuff, but you have to pay 105 for it. So you're actually doing worse. You're actually technically losing money. So that's what we're using. So when we grow up, when we take the present value to get to future value, we're trying to figure out what the internal rate of return is. And we're going to use that to get the future value. Now, when we want to figure out the present value, we're going to take the future value, use discounted cash flow to get back to the present value. The whole point here is you're trying to compare numbers in the future versus numbers now. I mean, think about the time value of money. If you have a choice of winning the lottery and getting 100 grand now or 150,000 in 10 years, what would you rather have? Well, you have to do the math on it because if you're in a very low inflation and interest rate environment, Maybe the 150 in 10 years works, okay? Although in reality, it shouldn't. Because if you take the 100 grand and invest it now, you should have more than the 150 by the end of 10 years. But that's the math you're doing. So the time value of money is saying, oh, the money now is worth more than money later. So if you invest 100 grand now and you use the interest rates, you can figure out what the future value is and make a decision on whether it is. So if you do the future value calculations of 100 grand and it's less than the 150 in 10 years, We'll take the 150 in 10 years. If you do and it's more, then do the take the money now and let it grow and be more than the future value. So let's go through the definitions. Discounted cash flow is the method of discounting all the future cash flows to come up with the present value today. That's DCF. Internal rate of return is the rate of return where you have a zero NPV. It's where present value equals future value on a time value basis. Future value is what an investment now will be worth in the future. Present value is what a future value will be worth is worth in today's dollars. NPV is really comparing, is it worth investing in? If I have a positive NPV, then it's worth investing. If I have a negative NPV, it's not worth it. And then the last one we can talk about is a required rate of return. The required rate of return is what we as a per each person has their own personal levels of risk and safety and reward. It's what we require to return based on the risk we're taking. So the required rate of return is what we want to get or we expect to get or what we won't accept less than based on a certain level of risk. And that every person has their own different RRR is not a set number. It is basically what your value, what you value the risk you're taking is.